Merhaba arkadaşlar, bu sefer değişik bir video ile karşınızdayım. Viyana'da bir konferansa gelmiş bulunuyorum. Irving Schrödinger Enstitüsü'nde. Ve enstitünün direktörü Christoph Kollego bizi kırmayıp da bir röportaj yapmayı kabul etti. Şimdi kendisinden enstitü hakkında biraz bilgi alacağız. Hello Christoph. Hello. Thank you very much for organizing and hosting this conference and for accepting the interview. Hmm? You're very welcome. I'm very glad to do this. Well, I have one intention in this yes. interview. It is to introduce the Schrodinger yes. Institute to our audience. So, can you tell us about the Schrodinger Institute? Sure, I'm very glad to do that. And let me welcome you here at the Schrodinger Institute. I would like also to say hello to your <laughs> audience. Very nice to be uh, on your program and to forgive you. Thank you for giving me a chance to explain a little bit about the Erwin uh, Schrödinger Institute here at the University of Vienna. So uh, you are here at the Schrödinger Institute for a, for a conference in mathematics and this is what we mainly do. The Erwin Schrödinger Institute is a visitor-oriented uh, research institute located here uh, at the University of Vienna in Vienna, Austria. And our main mission is to support research in mathematics and in physics and in particular at the intersection of the, of the two fields. We do this by carrying out uh, different programs. We organize workshops uh, like the one that you are particip participating in. So this is a gathering of scientists that co come to Vienna from all over the world to exchange ideas, to talk about their latest results, maybe to come up with new ideas and to start collaborations. Uh, so people give talks and then there are discussions and we have lots of blackboards so people can uh, write uh, on, on the blackboards uh, and, and discuss in front of the blackboards. And then we have longer thematic programs where people come to the Erwin Schrödinger Institute for a longer period of time, maybe one or two months. And we have uh, uh, desks here where, where they can work in peace, where they can also, but they can also discuss with, uh, with their colleagues. In addition to that, we have also a research in teams program uh, where um, small teams of people come to the Evans Schrodinger Institute and uh, to work uh, here on a focused, focused program. Then we have junior fellows who come here for a couple of months to work with, uh, with professors of the Faculty of Mathematics and the Faculty of Physics of the University of Vienna. And then we have also a senior research fellow program where, uh, where uh, more experienced researchers come to the University of Vienna and give lectures to our students. So you see, uh, the, the main idea of the Schrödinger Institute is to bring people together so they can discuss about their latest science and develop, uh, develop new ideas. So the Schrödinger Institute is, does not have any permanent scientific personnel. We have a uh, a few professors of physics and mathematics who uh, who uh, uh, direct the Schrödinger Institute, mm -hmm. but they they do their research in the faculties of physics and mathematics. They come just here for for workshops and seminars to meet their international to meet their international colleagues. Mm -hmm. So every year we have about 800 visitors who come here from. Uh, other European countries, but also from North America, South America, Asia, um, Australia. Sometimes we have also visitors from, from Africa, so it's a really international uh, place. Um, and we have many activities. We have about 10 workshops every year, maybe four or five thematic programs uh, attended by all these people. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Christoph, you were telling us about the programs of the institute in conjunction with the university. Yes. And I think the institute, it was founded as an independent institute, but now it is working within the university. That's absolutely right. Uh, the institute was actually founded in 1993. Uh, incidentally, the first site of the, of the Schrödinger Institute was the house where Schrödinger, uh, the famous Austrian physicist Erwin Schrödinger, one of the fathers of quantum mechanics lived for the last couple of uh, years of his life when he returned to Vienna coming from Dublin. 
So the institute was founded in 1993, almost uh, oh, more than 25 years ago now, uh, with the idea to provide a place to scientists from the East to come here, from Eastern Europe to come here, because this was the time when uh, communist governments in Eastern Europe collapsed and many people lost their jobs. So there was an initiative of a few professors here at the University of Vienna to um, set up an institute to help their colleagues from these countries so they could come here to the institute and work for a while, focus on the research before they would return to their, uh, to their countries. So starting in 1993, for many years, the Erwin Schrödinger Institute was funded by the government and existed as an independent institute, independent from the universities here in Vienna. But in 2011 we had a funding crisis and the ministry decided that they didn't want to fund institutes like the Erwin Schrödinger Institute anymore. So uh, we were, that's when we looked for different possibilities to keep the institute going and fortunately the University of Vienna um, took over the institute and since then it has been a uh, part of the University of Vienna and it is run together by people from the Faculty of Mathematics and the Faculty of Physics of the, of the University of Vienna. So for us the Erwin Schrödinger Institute is a very nice thing because it's the opportunity to, uh, uh, you know, it's a platform that you can use to uh, present what you are doing and to interact with your international colleagues, to organize activities about the subjects that you study in your research, bringing people to discuss with and maybe to start collaborations, uh, collaborations with, yes. I also think that research institutes such as this are crucial if you want to have an active and allied science going on. Yes, yes, so I think the Erwin Schrödinger Institute and other institutes like the Schrödinger Institute are very, uh, are very good for the community because it, it, really, it really enhances the, the scientific exchange that we can have and in contrast to, you know, places that, uh, um, that, um, that do only conferences, we are really an institute where people can come for extended periods of time and really do, do work here in a, in a peaceful atmosphere. And the building actually is uh, is very conducive, I think, to this kind of activity because it's a the building is over 200 years old and it has these high ceilings and it's provided this this atmosphere that is uh, I think very good for for doing this uh, research in in, the, in fields like uh, physics and mathematics mm -hmm. that require a lot of concentrate concentrated thinking. Yeah, that this is my first time in Vienna and at the Schrödinger Institute. And I was impressed by what you are offering to visitors. I'm very glad that you like it. Like you give an office space to everyone, yes. even just the participants. Yes, yes. And there are blackboards all around. And I, I think this is the first time I ever, I ever used a restroom with a blackboard inside. Even the, even the, <laughs> even the restroom has blackboards. Maybe you can show to your, uh, to, uh, to your viewers. Yeah, I they took a picture of it. Take a picture share. of of the toilet. Actually, I once calculated that we have more than 130 meters of blackboard uh, in the institute if you add them all together. And you are also working at the University of Vienna in the physics department. Yes, so I'm a professor of uh, physics, more specifically of computational physics, at the University of Vienna. So my teaching, I do. Uh, and research I do at the uh, Faculty of Physics of the University of Vienna, where I also have my research group, my doctoral students and my postdocs with my work, yes. Mm -hmm. So as a physicist, can I ask you what kind of research you are doing? So as I said, my field is computational physics. So I use computers to uh, understand condensed matter. Condensed matter, that's liquids, that's solids, so what we uh, do in our research is uh, we like to understand, we, uh, we try to understand how the properties of liquids, solids, nano uh, crystals, also biological systems uh, come about from the uh, atomic constituents 
of these materials. So you tell me what, which, which type of atoms are present in a certain material and I tell you which properties this material has. So this, this uh, predicting and understanding how materials behave on the basis of their atomic composition, that's what we do in our research and to do that we use big computers where, uh, that, we, that we use to run what we call molecular dynamics and Monte Carlo simulations where we simulate how atoms move around. For instance, during a phase transition, right? So we ask questions like, how does a liquid freeze? What happens when a liquid water turns into a crystal? How does it come about that the disordered arrangement of molecules in a liquid turns into a very ordered arrangement of, uh, of atoms? In a, in a crystal. So these are processes that we follow using the computer like a giant microscope, like a virtual microscope that allows us to follow the motion of individual molecules in, a, in order to understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. So I am not a physicist myself, I do more theoretical yes. mathematics. But from what you are describing to me, I was thinking couldn't you also observe this phenomenon by microscopes or experimentally? But what is the reason you are doing it? The, the reason why we are doing it computationally is that most experimental techniques that are available uh, do not have the spatial and the temporal resolution in order to uh, see what's going on on the atomistic scale. For instance, with uh, with a state-of-the-art electron microscope, you might be able to image individual atoms. But you're not able to see exactly how they move around, because atoms move on the time scale of femtoseconds and picoseconds. This is a picoseconds is, is 10 to the minus 12 seconds, so that's a very short time. Atoms rearrange on the picosecond time scale, but the electron microscope is not able to take pictures as quickly as, mm -hmm. uh, as it would be possible, uh, necessary in order to, to see the motion of individual atoms on this time scale. And this is the reason why we do uh, uh, computer simulations, because with the computer simulation we can actually do it. And we can resolve individual atoms and follow them in detail on the time scales that are natural for their, uh, for their motion. Also, sometimes computer simulations are cheaper than, uh, than expensive uh, experiments. But you know, also computers have their price because we, for our simulations, we need big computers. So we mainly use the computers uh, of uh, what's called the Vienna Scientific Cluster. This is a high performance computing um, infrastructure that is run uh, uh, together by a consortium of Austrian uh, universities and these are uh, big uh, machines with uh, ten thousands of computing cores and we use many of them in parallel to carry out our simulations that often take months to, uh, to complete. So these are pretty big calculations that we do. And um, finally, can I also ask you about the physics department at University of Vienna? Absolutely. Is it a large department? Is there some areas that you focus on? So, uh, I would say the Faculty of Physics of the University is a medium-sized department on the, on the international scale. It's the largest here in Austria. Mm -hmm. We have about 24 professors and a number of associate professors and assistant professors, many independent uh, research groups. Uh, we focus on a number of, of, of areas, computational physics, focusing on materials, uh, soft and hard materials is one uh, focus, and we have another focus in uh, quantum physics, that's experimental and, and theoretically. Then we have a focus on environmental physics, colleagues who do aerosol physics and who do uh, isotope physics. Um, and then we have some uh, people working in particle physics and in mathematical physics. So it's a very broad spectrum mm -hmm. of research uh, uh, activities that we do. We have a bachelor uh, degree that we offer, a master degree, and then we also have a doctoral degree that can be, uh, you know, that uh, students can work towards here at the Faculty of Physics. Mm -hmm.
can you also tell us if it is possible for non-Austrian students to come to Vienna and uh, study? Absolutely, absolutely. So we have many international students. We have international students from uh, uh, within the European Union, but also from outside the European Union. Uh, I, I'm not sure exactly about what the what the uh, what the exact uh, rules are, uh, but they, I'm sure they can be found on the web page of the of the uh, University of Vienna. Uh, for the undergraduate degrees that we offer, some knowledge of German is required mm -hmm. uh, because uh, most of the courses at the bachelor and at the master level are uh, given in German. At the doctor level, everything can be done in English. What I should also mention is that we have many visitors, uh, visiting students who come to the U University of Vienna for a semester through the Erasmus yes. program, which is a very nice thing I, I, I think to have. It's uh, I, this is something that I would recommend to every student to go and spend some time abroad because it's uh, a whole new experience. You get to know new people. You uh, see how people, how things work in, in a different place. So it really uh, widens your uh, your horizon if you if you do that. This is something very good to do. And then you know also later there are opportunities at the doctoral level. We have students from everywhere. We get many applications from from Asia, from Europe, from uh, also from uh, uh, America and the people that we. Uh, higher as a graduate student because usually they are involved in, uh, in research uh, projects and are funded by uh, uh, are funded through fellowships from uh, funded through research projects uh, they come from all over the place and the same for postdocs so we try to we try to uh, hire the best people that we can find and so we we uh, often have you know people come from very uh, different backgrounds. I should also mention that we have the Vienna Doctoral School in Physics here. This is a doctoral program that you run. Uh, if your viewers are interested in that, just mm -hmm. uh, you know they can have a look at the web page where it is explained what we do in detail. Yeah. Okay, I will try to put a link in the description sure. of the video. Okay. Do you happen to know about the cost of studies in Vienna? So it's mostly we have only very little tuition fees, so uh, uh, so the cost of studying here in Vienna is mostly the cost of living. Mm. So how much that is, I don't know. It also depends on the on the on, on the type of lifestyle that mm. you would like to have. Uh, but for example, for the doctor of studies, you don't need to pay much to the university. No. Okay, well, thank you very much for answering all you're, the questions. You are very welcome. It was uh, fun to be on your, on your program. Yeah. And I had a very nice visit at the Institute. So thank you as the director of the Institute. I'm glad, to hear that. I'm glad to hear that. And uh, maybe you will come again. I hope so. Okay, okay. thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you.